Hi, I'm Chris Sangster and welcome back to the studio. So I've been using Logic Pro 11 for a little over two weeks now and I have plenty of thoughts. Mostly good thoughts, I will say, right off the bat. We have some genuinely exciting and useful new features included in Logic Pro version 11, things that I think will legitimately help people to make better music faster. There's also one slightly terrifying feature, but we'll, we'll get there. Let's start with what we didn't get though. Plenty of things we've been asking for for years. No plugin search, no very speed automation, the notepad still locked to the main screen, amongst many others. But they did fix one big issue I had, and the solution is even more elegant than I thought it would be. In my five missing features of Logic Pro video, link below the like button if you haven't checked it out, I talked about wanting to be able to choose between a loop region and an audio region. See, the problem was that Logic would automatically detect when a loop was imported. You can see that it has done this when the region has this little loop icon at the top. When it detected an imported loop, it would automatically transpose it to be in the key of the project that you set in the LCD. And there was no easy way to turn this automatic pitch syncing off. So my solution was, let us choose whether or not a region is identified as a loop, and then we could bypass this auto syncing altogether. However, in Logic Pro 11, we have an even better solution. It is this new option in the region inspector called pitch source. Setting it to key signature makes the loop follow the project key and setting it to off allows the loop to be played at its original pitch. Oh. Simple as that. Why does that matter? Well, honestly, because I don't always set the key of my project properly, and I like to be able to import loops that I know are in the right key for the song. And also sometimes I intentionally want to use a loop that is not in the same key as the song for a creative effect. Now I can do all of that super easily, no complicated workarounds required. The attention grabbing new features in Logic Pro 11 are definitely the new bass and keyboard session players. These are very similar to the Logic drummer that we all know and love, but instead of creating drum parts, they create bass and keyboard parts. Aside from the ease of creating custom bass and keyboard parts with a few clicks of the mouse, which is really incredible by the way, these two new session players came with a few hidden features that for me are the real stars of the show. For starters, it comes with a much needed update to Logic drummer. Gone are those goofy, fake, faceless drummers like Kyle and Logan, and in their place is a much simpler and more in-depth list of drummer styles to choose from right in the new tracks menu. And there are some great new ones in here. I've really been digging indie disco, but I'm looking forward to trying them all out. We also have a redesigned interface for drummer, and this interface stays consistent now throughout all of the different session players. We change styles just by clicking on the drum logo here, and thankfully the change or retain patch option is clearly marked and visible and not hard to find like it used to be. Just uncheck the change patch selection if you want to change drummer styles, but maintain the drum kit sound you currently have. And the presets that we are used to seeing in the drummer window have now moved up to this drop down menu at the top. Altogether, it's just a much more streamlined interface. Gone is the XY matrix for complexity and intensity, and instead we get a simplified layout with these two sliders. We also have much more control over the drum pattern itself, which is a very welcome new addition. Now we can click on these patterns and choose between different preset patterns for the kicks and snares and the cymbals and toms. There's even more control in the details menu with the ability to change articulations of the snare and the hi-hat, as well as choose from different percussion instruments to add. 
but maybe the most welcome addition to the drummer redesign is the manual tab, where we finally get a step input pad with up to four bars of control over the exact placement of the kicks and snares. We can really fine tune our drum parts much further now than before. Before we continue on with the video, I've got a free gift just for you. A topic that causes a lot of confusion in Logic Pro are buses. So I've created the definitive guide to buses in Logic Pro. In this comprehensive video guide, you'll learn what buses are, how to use them, and advanced busing techniques. We start with the very basics and go all the way through some pretty advanced stuff. And I truly believe there's something in this video for everyone. So hit the link in the description box below the like button and download your free copy today. The bass session player has styles to choose from that are very similar to the drummer, but a bit more limited. And the keyboard session player just has these five basic styles to choose from. I'm hoping they will expand these options in the future like they have with drummer. The bass and keyboard session players have an interface very similar to the drummer. They just have options in the main and details menu that are appropriate for their instrument type like choosing how high or low the notes are played and the types of phrasing that are used. But the real magical new feature that comes with these new session players is called Chord Track. This is a new global track that we can activate by opening the global tracks, right clicking and ticking on chord. This new global track displays the chords that the session players will play, and it is where you can create and edit chord progressions for your session players to follow. Right click in the chord track and choose create chord. You then get this menu to create any chord that you want. Even better is that you can press this MIDI input button and then play a chord on your MIDI keyboard and Logic will automatically write that chord into the chord track. You also have the option to choose from preset chord progressions. Right click on a chord in the chord track and go to chord progressions. You will see several common chord progressions to choose from and they will follow the key that is set for the project in the LCD. I think this is actually a great tool to help you learn music theory. You can click on a chord progression, say two, five, one, and then you will see in the chord track that in the key of C major, D minor is the two chord, G major is the five chord, and C major is the one chord. You could then right click and choose to have or double the rhythm of the chords, or choose ungroup chords to edit each chord individually. But it's the integration with regions that takes chord track to the next level. You could choose for a session player region to ignore the chord track and follow its own internal chord progression, which is great for creating more complex harmonies. But check out what happens when I import an Apple loop. Corey Wong loop pack also available on Mac now in Logic Pro 11, absolutely love that. You see that we now get a display of the chords being played in the Apple loop at the bottom of the region. And these are the chords as they are sounding. So if you transpose the key of the song in the LCD, this chord readout at the bottom of the region will also change. But because we can't edit the chords within an Apple loop audio region. We need a way to sync up our session players with the chords that our Apple loops are playing. To do this, just select the Apple loops, right click, go to chords and choose paste region chords to global track. Now the chord track has the chords of the Apple loop region and all your session players will follow along. <laughs> Note that not every Apple loop has this chord functionality yet. It's just the newer ones right now. I'm hoping they're gonna update all of them, but you can tell if they have the chord functionality by this chord logo next to the key in the Apple loops menu. All in all, the new bass and keyboard session players, the drummer refresh and chord track are all massive wins. Great additions that I was not expecting. Okay, we've talked about the good. Now let's look at the, well, I don't want to say bad, let's call it the I'm not sure yet. Let's talk about Chroma Glow. 
This is Logic Pro 11's new analog modeling distortion plugin. For starters, it does require an M1 Mac or later to work. And on the surface, it's an attractive UI. I like the color palette and the simple setup a lot, but it matters what it sounds like. And that's just where, I don't know, the jury's still out for me. So it has these five models to choose from. Then each model has two styles. Now I haven't used it extensively and it is possible that I will find some good uses for it in the future. But the one mix I tried to incorporate it on, it just didn't work for me. It sent me running back to Decapitator every time I tried to use it. Even the presets weren't much help. Some of them sound pretty cool on their own. It's very possible that I just haven't gotten the hang of how exactly to use the plugin yet, but it just hasn't impressed me right out of the gate. Drop a comment below if you've been having issues with Chroma Glow as well, or let me know that you absolutely love it and I'm just too obsessed with Decapitator. That's totally possible as well. Okay, you saw it in the title of the video. It's time to talk about Logic for TikTok singers. I mean, Logic for Remix DJs. No, wait, sorry, sorry. It's a feature called Stem Splitter and it is wild. Again, like with Chroma Glow, Stem Splitter requires an M1 Mac or later to run, but what it does is automatically split a complete track into four separate stems, vocals, drums, bass, and other, which is just all the other musical instruments. And it works way better than I thought it would. Let's import my song, The Only Way, as an example. Here's a little bit of what the mastered, released version of the song sounds like. Running around to the we're going to right click, go to processing and then choose stem splitter. Then we get the option to choose which stems we want to extract. Let's do them all. And then remarkably fast, it splits the track out into the four stems. Let's listen to them each and see how it turned out. Running around to the furious sound and the brighter the the quicker we drown. I mean, those vocals are super usable for making a remix with. They have most of the tone and effects isolated really well. Honestly, pretty remarkable how well that worked on what is a pretty dense and complex track. I can definitely hear some artifacting and there's some places where it got confused. You can hear an initial consonant and then a little bit of delay from the vocal track in the other track here in the second verse. The claps sound a little phasey, but all things considered for a first generation of this new feature, Sounds insanely good. So Apple is advertising this as a way to quote, recover inspiration from old demo recordings or unfinished ideas from voice memos. Yeah, right. We all know what this is gonna be used for, to create instrumental tracks to make TikTok videos too. So let's look at how good the instrumental version of the song sounds. I have an instrumental version of The Only Way that's not mastered, but it will give us a good enough indication of how the stem splitter instrumental sounds compared to the real thing. Again, way too freaking good. Definitely super usable if someone wanted to make a video singing the song over top of this instrumental. I am curious what's lost in translation though, cause it's not exactly the same. So let's do a null test between the stems. Conveniently, they created a track stack for us. 
and the original song. I'll just put the gain plugin on the aux for the stems and invert the polarity. Super interesting. So there's definitely a lot that's being lost. To me, it sounds like a lot of mid-range information and transient information. And I think this is why the stemmed version sounds a bit hollow and lifeless compared to the original. But honestly, it's still really close to the real thing. This is definitely gonna be the TikTok cover artist and remixer's new favorite tool. And hey, more power to you. If you wanna cover or remix my music, I welcome it. But as always, with great power comes great responsibility, and I can already see some complicated issues arising from this tool and others like it as we continue to walk into the darkness of music creation in the age of AI. But what do you think? Am I crazy for thinking stem splitter is a little too good? How do you think it will be utilized? Drop a comment below and let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you at the studio next time. Thanks.